All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to talk a little bit about inner products and inner product spaces. So, um, so far you used to dot products where you just dot two vectors in Rn. It turns out you can do it in more general, in a more general fashion. And really, all the properties of dot products you use so far, they're just those ones. Namely, u dot v is v dot u. And I'm doing it on real space. For complex numbers, you put a bar here, but not today. And you have sort of a distributive property, so you can foil out dot products. And also, if you multiply u by a number, you can just take that number out from the dot product. And lastly, you just use the fact that if you dot a vector with itself, it's greater or equal to zero. And the only way u dot u is zero is if u itself is a zero vector. So again, you may not have thought of it this way, but really those are the properties you use. And what is an inner product space? It's just a space with a dot product just satisfying all those properties. In other words, let's forget everything we know about dot products except for those properties. And today I will just give you some examples and I'll just show you that they're not too different. From what we've done so far is not too different from what we'll do today. For example, take the space R2, and by space I mean vector space, but that's not the point of today. Take R2, but u dot v, it's simply, so if u is u1, u2, and v is uh, v1, v2, then u dot v, it's simply the usual dot product, u1, v1, plus u2, v2, except you put extra numbers, so 5 here, 4 u1, v1, plus 5 u2, v2. In other words, you take, take the dot product, but you sort of weight, you weigh the weights here a little bit. And that's good if you want to say, well, I really want to emphasize, let's say, the first component, and I want to de-emphasize the second component, if you'd like. And notice we can actually put this sort of in terms of a matrix, because this is really for u1, v1, plus 0, u1, v2, plus 0, uh, u2, v1, plus uh, 5 u2 v2. I think that's what it is. And you can write this as 4 0 0 5. And in particular, here's an interesting thing. What is the most general dot product we can put on this may on R2 or on Rn? And it turns out uh, the most general one you have so by the way, you can just write this as uh, u dot v is u transpose 4005 uh, v. The question is, what is the most general form of a dot product on Rn? It turns out it's the following fact. The most general dot product you can put on Rn is u dot v is u transpose a v, where a is a symmetric matrix, matrix that's positive definite, in other words, with only positive eigenvalues. And uh, by the way, a symmetric matrix is always diagonalizable, so this does make sense. And here, for example, yes, we have a symmetric matrix with positive eigenvalues. So just if you're curious, and I think when I teach my more advanced course, I might do a proof on this. So it's very neat. Okay, so that was one kind of a dot product where you weigh things a little bit. The second kind of dot product is, for example, on the space of polynomials. So take polynomials. Suppose, you know, like, uh, I don't know, polynomials like x squared minus 3 or x cubed plus 3x squared, etc., etc., then you can just define p dotted with q to be p of 0, q of 0. 
So for example, here, uh, x squared minus 3 dotted with x cubed plus 3x squared would be minus 3 times 0, which is 0. And in particular, there's nothing special about 0. You can do it at 1, at 2, at any number you want. And in fact, you can combine this. You can just do p of 1 point, t naught, q of t naught, plus uh, p of t1, q of t1, plus dot dot dot, plus p of tn, q of tn. In other words, you sample what's called, you're sampling your polynomials at some nodes t0 up to tn. If you do that, you get a, another dot product. And I think it's useful maybe, you know, remember in, in Riemann integration, you use sort, sort of that thing as well. Um, so that's one thing. And then the most important example I want to talk about, it's simply continuous functions. So you can take dot products of, of functions in general. Namely one that, that looks brand new, but that's actually not quite new. So, so if you have the spaces of continuous functions on AB, then you can take F dotted with G to simply be the integral from A to B of f of t, g of t, dt. And I remember the first time I saw this, I was so surprised, but like pleasantly surprised, because how cool is that? You can take the dot products as functions. But I want to show you, it's actually the analog of what you've been doing in Rn. Because what does it mean to take a dot product in Rn? It means a1 up to an dotted with b1 up to bn. You take, you know, a1 b1 dot 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 plus an bn. But in terms of summation, that's the sum from n from 1, sorry, k from 1 to n, n of a k b k. Let me abuse notation a little bit and write it as follows. That's the same as the sum from t from 1 to n of a t b t. So you see, to take dot products, what you're doing, you multiply your vectors and you sum them up. But that's just what, the Riemann, what an integral is. You multiply those two functions and you sum them up. Because remember, an integral is just a sum. So this is like saying you sum from a to b of f of t, g of t. It's the same thing here. You do, you know, f of t times g of t, and you sum it from 1 to n. That's why it looks like a scary dot product, but it really isn't. So, for example, now if you take, I don't know, uh, let's say t squared, and you dot it with tq, then there's just the integral from a to b of t squared times tq dt. And that's integral from a to b of t to the fifth dt. And that's, if you want, an antiderivative is 1 6 t to the sixth. So b to the sixth minus a to the sixth over six. And you need you get a number, so which is what you expect. And the nice thing is you can, everything you, you've done so far with dot products, you can apply this. So in fact, let's use this space as an example for all our techniques. First of all, what is the norm of a vector? Well, it's simply square root of u dotted with u. And this is true for dot products in Rn, but the nice thing is this just uses the dot product, so it works in general. So let's, for example, calculate the norm of e to the t with this thing. So it's square root of e to the t dotted with e to the t. And that's square root of integral from a to b, e to the t, e to the t, dt. So et is calling home. And that's square root from integral from a to b, e to the 2t, dt. And that is square root of, you know, uh, e to the 2b minus e to the 2a 
over 2. So that is the, the uh, square root of the function e to the t. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know what that means you know, in practice. But, uh, and not only that, as I said, everything we've done, you can generalize to inner products. So for example, let's calculate the projection of the function t on the function 1. Okay, so again, we have this function t here and the function 1, and we would like to calculate this t hat with the property that t minus t hat is perpendicular to the span of 1. Well, the formula is exactly the same as before. So it's a multiple of 1, and the way you do this, you dot t with 1, and 1 is so happy, it dots itself. And this time, it's just the integral from a to b of t dt over the integral from a to b. So t times 1, which is t, 1 times 1, which is 1, 1 dt, and then antiderivative is t squared over 2. So again, this times 1. So, and this becomes just b squared or minus a, b squared over 2 minus a squared over 2 over b minus a times 1, which doesn't affect anything. And you can simplify this a little bit. So that's b minus a times b plus a over b minus a. And this cancels out. And you get basically a plus b over 2. Kind of weird. If you project t on the function 1, somehow you get the average of those intervals. And in particular, if you want to construct a function that's perpendicular to 1, in this inner product, you just do uh, t minus t hat, and which becomes just t minus into minus a minus b over two. And indeed, if you dot this with the function one, uh, you should get zero. So uh, yeah, you should get the b squared minus. Yep. All right, and in fact, let me check this. I, I don't believe it, but <laughs> it should be true. Um, let me see. So if you take this, so if you take integral from a to b of t minus a plus b over 2, and you dot it with the function 1, you get this thing, which becomes, so b squared minus a squared over 2, minus, so this is a constant, a plus b over 2, times a b minus a okay this does make sense so uh, um, so you get b squared minus a squared over 2 and then so basically uh, this becomes uh, a plus b times a minus b so plus a squared minus b squared over 2 and then this does give you zero so in particular those uh, this vector t minus a plus b over 2 and the vector 1, they are perpendicular by this property. So minus b over 2 is in fact perpendicular to the function 1. So how nice is this? And yes, I guess time to stop. That's what the light is telling me. And uh, also, um, you can uh, do other fun stuff with that. For example, you can apply the Gram-Schmidt process to functions. But that's the point of another video where I will construct the Legendre polynomials. All right, I hope you like this uh, um, inner product adventure. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thank you very much.